Thank you so much for joining our webinar this morning in the UK with Mohi Udin, who is going to be focusing on assessment. If you have any questions, as always, please feel free to write them in the chat box. Do stick to the topic at hand, which I'm sure you will. The PowerPoint and the CPD certificate will be made available as soon as the webinar finishes via email. So do check your spam and junk folders. I will pass it over to Mohi now. Thank you. Hi everyone, welcome back. I think for some of us, this is our second or even third webinar this academic year. So thank you so much for attending the previous ones and also this one and well done Macmillan for organizing so many webinars. Um, so today's session is all about assessment. And I think we've got another session next week, which you can find out more details at the end of this session and also um, on the Macmillan website. So it's really good to see you, especially in this um, awkward time we face um, in the world where you know, we're probably in some sort of local lockdown, but thankfully we can still see each other all across the world. Do let me know in the chat box. There should be some sort of chat box on your screen somewhere, possibly on the right hand side, like my, uh, my one, that you can hear me okay and you can see me okay. And also when we ask questions, it's so much more better in these webinars when you interact with us because when you interact with us it makes me feel like you are listening firstly just like if you're a teacher and your children in your blended learning classes say something that it means that they're alive and they are listening which is a good sign for future lessons right um so just let me know that you can hear me okay i think I'm, aisha thank you so much aisha for letting me know and you can see me okay, and that'll be really helpful. When I do ask questions, um, it's always uh, important for you to kind of have a think about the question, and then if you can type in your solution. We, this is our second webinar today on this uh, specific topic. So um, the last session was really interactive, um, and we really enjoyed ourselves because there's a lot of communication between the teachers um, on your side and and myself here. So that would be really good if we can keep that up, um, and uh, and uh, really appreciate it as well from from our side. Okay, so let's get started. So, what are the um, core elements of today's session? Um, we're going to be looking at, you know, formative assessment and summative assessment, as well as thinking about blended learning for assessment in assessment. Is that, is that even possible? Is that something new for us? Uh, and then we have about 10 minutes at the end of our session um, to go through any questions that might have arisen from the session itself. Um, so, yeah, I mean, if you have any questions before the Q&A session, you can obviously ask, that's not a problem. And if I feel that it's the right time to answer, because sometimes these questions um, can take a while to answer, and I don't want to kind of lose the flow of the of the session. So I will try to answer them when you send the question over. Um, however, if it's something that I can hold on to and answer at the end, then I'll do that and I'll let you know as well. If I miss out a question, because sometimes there's lots of text going up and down in the chat box, if I miss a question, um, just let me know again, just you know, copy and paste it again and, and then Hopefully, I'll um, I'll answer that. Um, it's not that I'm trying to avoid any um, questions or anything like that. So, uh, spare that in mind. Um, so, the first question I want to start off our session with is: Why do we assess our pupils? Have a think about that, and get get a chance to. If you've got like colleagues around you, if you're in a school and you've got like other teachers in the in the in the room, have a have a discussion with them and uh, type in why you think that we uh, assess our pupils. Thanks, Charlene and Patricia. Hello, Patricia. Good morning. Hello, Ahmed. Gada says to reflect on ourselves as well, to move on, as well as to move on. What do you mean by moving on? Can we not move on without assessing? Or what kind of assessing do we need to do to move on? To see how much kids are learning? Great. Prashi, Prashi says to see how much kids are learning. Um, moving on to the next level, says Gada. What? There's a few others right typing away. To ensure understanding. How does assessing ensure understanding? Let me know, um, Mitzi. How does assessment 
assessing ensure understanding to see if they understand their content identify barriers to learning and find room for improvement for both teachers and students to monitor students progress says Aisha thank you Aisha to know the teacher teachers effectiveness and learning of students to know if we meet or met our goals and objectives to know whether kids are struggling to check students understanding great anything else got more more typing away anything that we've missed to check their strengths and weaknesses says inas asma says to make sure that they they've got the concept okay maybe more than one concept sometimes yeah and how does that play a part in our teaching you know and planning does it play a part at all in the way we teach and plan to assess does assessment have any repercussions on on the way we teach and plan to make sure that they get the concept to check that level acquired skills of pupils to assess the standards maybe prior knowledge and build on it says salma um anjum says yes of course <laughs> okay <laughs> so how does that how how uh, Prashi says yes. If can replan or change my strategies. Okay, if I can re replan or change my strategies, says Arogya re Reedy. Ready? Um, sorry if I said that you're wrong. Uh, pronounced it wrong. Um, maybe one or two others are still typing, so I'll give a chance for everyone to find out what students know or understand. Lesson objectives to check the understanding level of children. Help to reflect on our teaching says Salma okay right so quite a few things there right and then we've got a few more typing away so just give you another 30 seconds to kind of get that through um, yes it does we can plan better for future by knowing areas students find difficult and where you as a teacher can better the way you assess okay great um, what else have we got? Assessment helps us to get a clear picture of where their level of thinking, learning, and if our objectives were met, to know the understanding of the pupils. Okay, great. So we've got quite a few things there. So let's have a look at the next slide. What is the point of assessment? Well, firstly, is to evaluate learning, like many of us have mentioned. Evaluating learning, how much or how little in some cases, learning has taken place and how much have they retained how much of the learning have they retained so it could be that in the lesson you're evaluating how much of the lesson have they understood and maybe after a certain um, unit or even a few units you might and you might evaluate how much they've retained so there's two aspects there right learning how much they're learning, how much they have learnt within a short period of time. And then you've got how much they've retained, how much of that information has been retained. So that's two different things there. Understand learners. What do I mean by that? How do we understand learners? What is in assessment? How do I understand a learner? That, does that make sense? To know understanding of the people's assessment is how much you have learnt. Okay. So it also gives us an idea about our learners. So for example, you might have um, taught a certain strategy when it comes to addition or subtraction or multiplication division, doesn't matter which, which operation or which topic. You might have taught a certain strategy, but in the assessment or even during the lesson, you're looking at your students' work and they're using an, an approach, a strategy that they may have used last year, or they may you be using an inefficient strategy or an informal strategy that is not very formal. And today's lesson was more about formalizing this. And so that gives you an idea about your learners, where they're at. If the whole class is doing that, then maybe they haven't understood the new strategy. Maybe they're more comfortable with the previous strategy. So that gives you an idea about where your learners are. Highlight strengths and weaknesses, as many of us have said. The next steps. How do I how does assessment help with next steps? What do you think? How does assessment help with the next steps? Give you a minute to think about that. What does that mean? 
can assessment help the next steps? Isn't assessment about the previous steps like and the current step maybe? So how does it help with the next steps? Give me an example. That would be good. So we've got a few of us typing away. Great. Okay, so we've got quite a few typing away, so just wait for the, those four or five, seven now. Wow, quite a lot. <laughs> right. um, if they reach to the point where they can understand the next level. Okay, give me an example. Helps to plan next unit lessons. That's a really, you know, uh, perfect answer. Um, and I'll give you an example of that to identify if students are ready to move on to a next level. Students must be able to count before they can move to an addition or subtraction concept. Great. Thank you, Aisha. Thank you for an example as well. Right. So some, some really good points. So, for example, if I have a whole unit on um, multiplication and division, and let's say majority of my class didn't really understand it very well. Okay, and it can happen, right? Sometimes um, it could just a small thing uh, can just kind of get their minds off the topic and then they're kind of, they're not sure about what you've done or said. So that can definitely happen. So how does that impact us? Well, if we've seen that they're really weak in multiplication and division, then if we look at the next chapter, it might be on fractions, for example. If we look at a chapter on fractions, then we know there's going to be a, a decent amount of basic multiplication and division. And if they haven't really conquered multiplication and division, I know the impact of that will go into my fractions lessons. And therefore, when I assess for fractions, I know they're going to get a poor result. I mean, it is not going to take, it's not, you don't have to be a genius to work that out, right? So as a teacher, Sometimes we find ourselves rushing through, right? Like going to another topic, just, just trying to cover the curriculum as fast as possible. But then that doesn't really help us because when we assess our children in certain units, if they haven't done as well as we hoped, then we know that's going to have a huge impact on future units. So if you find yourself or your school finds themselves in a position where you know we're just rushing through to kind of get through the curriculum to cover as many topics as possible before the end of the year, then that's going to have a dramatic impact on your assessment. And that's going to have a dramatic impact on your children because next year they're going to go through a similar stage, right? So bear that in mind. And so with the kind of results we get, with the um, data we get from assessment, it should really affect, it should really give us an effective way to plan for the future. So if we know that they've struggled on addition subtraction, then we know we have to spend a bit more time on that, right? But sometimes it's quite challenging at the beginning of the year where children have had a, a long period of time off for summer holidays, or even now at this current situation where children have a long time off due to the coronavirus lockdown. And so they have had a huge time off. And so you need a quick way right at the beginning of the year to understand where they're at. It doesn't have to be a test, but it just could be something really short and quick. And that's something that we've got for you as well. We're gonna discuss that uh, in a future slide um, and kind of go through that with you. So hopefully I'm sure we're all aware that we have two types of assessment that we typically talk about, formative assessment and summative assessment. Where formative assessment is ongoing, it's something that is through observations normally, through assessment for learning. And assessment for learning is, in case you're not sure what that is, AFL, um, is learning is the process of seeking and interpreting evidence for use by learners and their teachers to decide where the learners are in their learning, where they need to go and how best to get there. So have a think about that. Have you used AFL techniques, strategies? If you have, give us an indication. Give us um, one or two um, ways you've used assessment for learning in your classrooms.
exit cars, exit tickets. So quite a few of us exit tickets. What's an exit ticket? Explain to us, those who are really new to exit tickets. Pop quiz. Pop quiz, I think I get it, right? So, so quite a few of us are using exit tickets or exit cards, right? Um, quizzes. How does a quiz help us interpreting evidence for use by learners and their teachers to decide where... Does it tell us where learners are? Yeah, the quiz. Anything else? Kahoot, yeah. Pre-quiz before starting the next unit. End end product of a new an end product of an activity. Individual work. Open ended questions, polled questions at the beginning of lesson, pop quiz. So quite a lot of us saying pop quiz, exit tickets. These are like the 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 um quite a big um most popular uses right so you've got reflective activities okay at the beginning of the lesson pop quiz okay so so that's a, that's a new one using near pod activities if online okay so yeah now i think most of us are online now so we're gonna have to be um use different techniques now right be a bit more innovative when it comes to assessment for learning okay so got quite a few things there right one thing that um, we've used quite often is the traffic light system, yeah? Um, and maybe you've come across a traffic light system, maybe you haven't, because I haven't seen anyone uh, mentioning that um, as a, their AFL technique. This is quite often, used quite often now, um, and there's different kind of for, uh, different um, ways we can use this. And typically what happens with the traffic light system is where uh, at the end, of uh, a lesson or even at the end of activity, children have in their diaries, so some children in secondary have diaries, some children in primary, they'll have um, cards, red, yellow, and green cards on their desk. Every single child has one. And so at the end of the activity, class teacher might ask something like, how did you feel uh, about that, that activity? Did you manage to answer the questions? Were you confident? And those sort of questions, right? And so those children that aren't confident, they'll put up their red cards. And those who are really happy that they, they think they've conquered this topic, they'll put up the green card. Those who are 50-50 where they think, you know what, um, some questions I got right, some of them they were a bit too tricky for me, I didn't understand, so they'll put up the orange card, okay? And that way, if you imagine your 30 children in front of you or however many you have, you see um, that they have done well or they have not done well according to their belief right and so that's one way but now if you if you actually um do that as a class and you everyone shows their card what tends to happen right is my friend next to me who i've known for a long time and i'm really um i really want to impress them ah they've got a green card if I put a red or an orange card, it's going to make me look like I don't know what I'm doing, right? It's going to make me look unintelligent. Uh, so maybe I'll just, I, I do know most of it. So I won't put the orange card, which I was initially going to do, but I'll put the green card up. So that could happen, right? And that happens quite often. Um, and in fact, that's why a lot of teachers have stopped using that system. But instead, even if you leave the class and you give your ticket, or the green, red, yellow ticket, that's a lot more work for a teacher, right? That means you know, you've got to kind of record that. It's a bit more challenging for you because then it's a bit more admin work for you. So what um, some schools have done is also they've, they've put down in the exercise book or if you're using a workbook, in the workbook where it's the first page, children draw a circle that could be red, yellow, or, um, or green, red, orange, or green, right? And so... That way, when the teacher goes through each book individually, they can straight away see how the child felt uh, in the lesson, whether they were confident or they were quite far behind or whatever the case may be. OK, so it's something that uh, we can do. Um, looking at some of your comments, a lot of exit tickets, self-evaluation. Self-evaluation is good. You, you get to see what you are not good at. All right. So thank you, Drusilda. Dr um, for that comment um so here's a few more afl techniques um have a look at some of them um maybe you recognize some maybe you don't um let me know which ones you've used uh, and also let me know which year group you're teaching that way i can kind of um get a better understanding of 
what uh, year groups we have in, in terms of the teachers. So have a look. I've circled three of them, which are probably the most um, well-known three. Possibly there's a few others that are very well-known, like self-evaluation, for example, peer assessment, peer marking. You know, these are uh, quite well-known. Um, the three I've circled are, are really, really, really well-known. What is feedback sandwich? You can research that yourself. I'm not going to go through all of them because there's too many there. Okay, I don't know every single one of them because it's not my list, but you can do the research yourself and you can kind of uh, find out as well. But I'll go through uh, two or three of them by the end of our session. Otherwise, it goes, uh, it will take the whole session going through every single one of these and you get very bored. So I'll go through two or three of them. Um, Thank you, Gada. Hopefully, they'll be useful. But like I said, you can you can do your own research. You can type in AFL techniques and AFL strategies, and type in the the one that you're interested in. Yeah, um, or the one that sounds a bit uh, like something that you might want to do. That would be good. Okay, so which ones do you use? Do you use any of these? I'm I'm sure we use some of these, right? I'm sure every single one of us has used at least one of these. So which one have you used? Which ones have worked out well? Which ones haven't worked out well? Um, and let's have a discussion about that. And we're going to go through two or three of them and talk about a few key points that I think are really important for us to think about. Um, because just by using them, it doesn't mean it's going to be great. Um, it's the way we use them as well, okay? The way we administer these tasks are also, you know, it's, it's also a major part of how successful um, you will be when using them and how much information you can gain from using them. Thumbs up, thumbs. Okay, so students ask questions. So we've got a KWL. What's KWL? Explain that to me, someone. Grade five, smiley faces, one sentence, summary is good. As students wrap up, yeah, that's a really good one. Uh, Mitzi. what we know standard two great ah uh, know what i want to know and learned okay learned graphic graphic organizer really useful says gada what we learned learning journals mid unit assessment Okay, rubric, rubric, rubric. Mid-unit assessment is that is that formative though, or is that is that is that summative assessment? Okay, we'll look at that in a bit. What students know, what students want to know, what they want to learn is great. Okay, great. So, got a few a few responses there of what you've been using. Brilliant. So, um, just to kind of like go through two or three of them and and give you uh, a few other ideas, and also talk about how we administer these tasks. So, one uh, one thing we've talked about is traffic lights. So we've gone through that already. Post-it notes are brilliant. Okay, I think you've said exit exit cards. It's similar to I think exit cards, if not the same. Um, so post-it notes are brilliant because when you you can ask your children um, that you know on one side of the post-it notes, write down all the positive things. So like you know what you learned from this lesson or something that you enjoyed from the lesson and so forth. Um, and on the other side, write down something that could be improved. Okay, or something that's negative, right? And that way. You get you get that at the end of the lesson. You can quickly go through it, and uh, you know what I've seen myself, my personal experience, um, professional experience, is that um, that children are really honest, and you you find some really interesting positive comments that you'd never have thought of as a teacher, and so it gives you a much better idea about your students. Um, traffic lights we've gone through, and the other one is two stars and a wish, similar to post notes in a way. Um, two stars and a, and a wish is um, normally used for peer assessment, and so your children assess um, your you know their their peers' work to so someone next to them typically, um, and what they write down is two stars means two things that they thought was amazing, right? Something that they, two things that they really liked basically in the work. So it's a bit more challenging with maths work. Um, but it's still possible in some ways, but you can do it with other subjects. Two things that you felt they felt that is really good. And one wish, two stars and a wish means two stars, two things that went really well. And one wish is the one thing that they can they think that they can improve on. And by choosing some children in the class to kind of give their uh, reflective view 
on their peers peers work to give us two things that they're really happy with and one thing that they could improve on it makes the child feel like wow you know you get two things that are positive and only one thing that's negative it makes them really listen to the things that they can improve on and obviously as a teacher you'd probably coach them on things that they look out for in terms of things that are negative and things that are positive um, but there's another one that I wanted to go through with you, parent self-assessment, okay? So the parent self-assessment is right in the middle uh, on the th one, two, three, fourth um, column. And you can see that peer marking or self-assessment and peer assessment is something that we probably use uh, uh, quite a bit of, right? But we have to be really careful the way we administer this. Um, so for example, if it was... Um, in maths, in, in self-assessment, if and I use self-assessment extensively, pretty much in every lesson I taught, um, I used either peer or self-assessment. Why? Because I find it's really useful for a teacher to save a lot of time because you're not marking every single question yourself as such. But at the same time, if you get it wrong, then it doesn't give you the right information that you need. So for example, I used um, self-assessment frequently. So if I just get my children to mark their work whilst I give the answer out, it's going to have some skewed results in the sense that you might get a lot of children or all of your children getting everything right, every single lesson. Is that really realistic? very unrealistic right if that was the case they wouldn't we wouldn't need teachers if they kept getting things right okay so so there, there's probably some children that maybe cross out their answer and then write down the right answer as we're going through so how do we prevent that that's the question i want to ask you how would you prevent this how would you prevent children changing the answer and putting a tick for every single question when we're assessing using self-assessment or even peer assessment how would you prevent that from happening give you a minute to think about that and another minute to kind of type away so give you two minutes Right, so, sorry, Patricia, I'll, I'll speak a little bit slower. Um, parents can test their children, child knowledge if they have good amount of knowledge in the area. Let them know they should mark the paper correctly. Okay, Drusilda says, let them know they should mark the paper correctly. They might do that for that, that lesson. Okay, but then the next lesson or um, somewhere in that lesson, they will forget that reminder. Okay, um, and children are children, you know, um, even adults would kind of change as well, actually. Right. So, so, you know, you can let, let them know, but you know what's going to happen. There will be some that won't do that. Okay, uh, if not a lot after a, a week or two of doing that, um, let them know they should mark the paper correctly. Encourage the use of different color link inks to checkbooks. So you can use different colors, but you know how quick children are. When you've got 30 children, some of us have maybe have more than 30 children in one class, that's going to really affect how you can observe every single one of them. It's not going to be possible. Peer marking is better than self-marking and is better to recruit a leader of the group to mark for them can be changed weekly. So yeah, you can have peer assessment. Peer marking is, is probably a little bit better. Um, uh, but that can still happen there as well, right? If they, especially if they've got the book next to them. You can say, oh, no, no, I, 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 I meant to write this, okay? So and I've changed changed my answer, right? So that can also happen. But peer assessment is much better, you're right. Sometimes self-assessment is good as well. But in either of those cases, how do we reduce those numbers from um, changing their answer? One way is a good way is to use different colored ink, okay? Um, but most children in primary are going to be using pencil, so that might be more challenging. If using learning management system, you could switch questions for each child so they won't get to cheat. 
computer will make for you so you won't have to. Yeah, if you're using an online um, learning management system where the, 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 the kind of um, answers are marked for you, then it's different, right? But if you're not using that, if you're not using that system and you have to do the marking or someone physically has to do the marking, that's going to be more, you know, that's not going to be possible, right? So another way could be encourage them if you aren't sure what they are weak at, it will cause them not to get better at the area they are weak at. Yeah, I mean, we could encourage them, but realistically, there will still be children that are going to change their answers, okay, as you're going through them. So that's why it's, and that would be disastrous for you because you might take a long time to realize that. And therefore, what would happen is that by the time you realize, um, they've already fallen quite far behind because they, they seem like they got everything right, but it wasn't the case. So one thing I would suggest to you is never to give the answers to them. What do I mean by that? You should never give the answers to them. What do you think I might mean by that? How would they assess if they never get the answers from you? This is difficult to monitor, says Mohinda. I usually have them use different color inks, which is a good technique, different color inks, and put away all the all the rest. So at the point of self-assessment, only the green pens are out. It's a good point. Give students the opportunity to explain how they reached their answer. So if they change their answer, they should be able to explain how it was reached. Okay, great. So Aisha has a good point, right? So one thing I would do when I was a teaching, I used to have a system in place. Um, and the system was this. So we used to have rows of of um, uh, of, of tables. So each row had like um, eight children, I suppose, right? Um, we used to have about 24 to 30 children, 32 children uh, in the class. So when we have rows, I used to tell a child, like if front row, my top right of uh, first row, the right hand side, the first child there, they would start off, I might choose the left hand side or I might choose a top row, left-hand side, top row, right-hand side, or somewhere in the middle, okay? It just depends whatever mood I was in that day, okay? But whenever I used to um, choose a child, the child next to them would instantly know after this child tells, gives the answer out, I'm going to be next. So that's one of the rules, okay? That whenever someone next to me gives an answer, so if, if I'm sitting on a table, teacher's in front of me, I'm listening, the teacher chooses me, I'm the person that's in and the, and the furthest away, so the next person to me is on my right, there's no one on my left apart from a wall, then I, the child next to me on my right will know when Mahudin gives an answer, then the teacher next, the teacher's going to expect me to answer the next question, okay? And so what I used to do is, I used to start off question one, the first person gives me the answer. I never verbally give the answer first. It's the child that gives me the answer. The whole class hears their answer. And therefore, what I do from there is say it's correct or incorrect. And so the class hears me say incorrect or correct, and then they mark their work as we go along each question. How does that help me? That helps me because then I can hear different questions a child's response a child's answer so in my mind i'm accumulating this knowledge to see oh everyone is getting it right or everyone's getting it wrong right rather than me giving the answer to them what's going to happen if i give the answer i have no clue until i see their books whether they're getting it right or wrong and some children will be ticking away whilst they they've actually got it wrong okay and so that gives me instant feedback in my class live during the session whether our children in the class understand uh, the the topic at hand and whether they've been getting the questions right as well so that's some feedback for you to kind of think about um hopefully you can use that technique uh, in your class let us know how it went if you do use it in our next session we've got another webinar next week as well okay so um so we're going to move on uh, so kind of like summary of um, formative assessment. Formative assessment plays a huge part in the day-to-day -day teaching and planning. The aim of formative assessment is to develop knowledge and understanding. And as it's built into the learning process, it's very dynamic and it allows to progress through units of work without interruption. 
The key feature of formative assessment is that it allows dynamic decision making and planning for teachers in response to people's understanding. Okay, so some information there. You'll get this PowerPoint slides um, as PDF probably, right? And, and you can use this to kind of recap on some of the things that we've said. Then we've got summative assessment, which in essence is to summarize, summative, summarize, to summarize a unit of work. And one of the things that we've done at Macmillan Education, so I've worked with Macmillan for about two, three years now. It's about around that time. And, you know, I've been really um, uh, privileged, actually, to go around the world with them and deliver CPD face to face before the whole pandemic. Um, and and go around to the countries that you're from. So let me know. I think um, in our last session, the last webinar, everyone let me know which country they're from. So type in which country you're from, so I can get a good understanding where where you're from. And maybe I've visited you. Maybe you've seen me actually face to in one of our face to face sessions. Um, and so um, one of the things that we've done at Macmillan is that we've created our own assessment packs, and I've helped develop these um, uh, about a year ago now. And in those packs, we've used a lot of visual support. So we know that a lot of our schools are international schools where English is not the first language of the pupils, right? But at the same time, you're going to be teaching in English. So that makes it a lot more challenging, right? And so how do we support you? Um, we support you even in our assessment. We do this all the way through in our um, in our textbooks and our workbooks. But even in our assessment packs, what we've done is we've tried to make sure there's visual elements so that it supports you. So here, for example, at the early stages, we've got this question which shows seven, seven, uh, seven apples or oranges, right? Oranges maybe, right? And therefore, you can see that there are there are six oranges and one more orange makes seven orange. So our children can circle six oranges and one orange and you can see that all together, it's seven oranges. And in the second, in the actual question below, they have that idea, they can visually see that representation using the pictorial representation along with the abstract and then they can have a go themselves. And therefore, it's so important that you can um, you can kind of take advantage of the visual elements in our textbooks and our workbooks and our assessment packs to kind of get the get the most out of your children. Because what you'll find is that your children might actually be okay with the maths but they struggle with the English. And so that means that when you assess them, it might seem like they haven't got the concept. Actually, they might have actually perfectly understood the concept, but they haven't got the English to understand what was asked of them. And so how do we get around that? The best way, the easiest way is through the CPA approach, the concrete pictorial abstract approach. And if you've been to any of our uh, other webinars, not focusing on assessment specifically, you'll find that we speak about that a lot. Okay, is so one of the major parts of the Macmillan Max Math series of books. Uh, if you haven't been using the CPA approach in your lessons, then I would strongly recommend you do that, especially in the age we're living in now, where we're going through this lockdown, we're going through this pandemic, and so it's going to be much more challenging to convey an idea, is to convey this concept. And so that CPA approach, which is research done by someone called Jerome Bruner, um, it's had a huge impact in Singapore and many other countries. So let me um, just read out some of the countries we're from. Oh, wow. So we've got a lot of Jamaican teachers, which is brilliant. E Egyptian teachers. We were in Egypt um, not that long ago, uh, about a year or so ago, delivering um, a session there. We had about um, 200, if I'm not mistaken, teachers attend. That was like amazing. Uh, Oman, we haven't been Oman, but maybe Raina can set something up for us to go to Oman. That would be brilliant. South Africa. Um, oh, wow. We've got South Africa. I've got Trinidad and Tobago. We've got Jamaica again, Saudi Arabia, which we were in in December, if I'm not mistaken. We were there. Um, Kuwait, Belgium. Belsize, Belsize, Belize, sorry, Belsize. We've got a school in England called Belsize, and I thought I read Belsize, Bel Bel Belize. Where is Belize? I haven't heard of that country before, um, or is that a region? I don't, I'm, I'm so bad at my geography. I'm better, hopefully, at my, at my maps. Tunisia, Oman. So we've got people from loads of different countries, which is brilliant. Um, 
Yes, definitely. I think uh, Mohinder's right. You know, that this helps learners with the whose first language is English, but they're struggling with reading as well. So the CPA approach it definitely helps with those children that are struggling with English and struggling with other aspects as well. So you know, it's something that that's uh, that. We don't have a huge amount of time to go through today, but you know, do do, do your research on it. And you find that out; it does help a lot. I was just in the UAE, Anjum. Uh, we were in Dubai. I delivered a, a conference at the uh, Middle East Maths Conference, um, which was a, a huge conference. We had about three hundred teachers there as well. I was delivering there in in Dubai um, just in February um, this year, so it feels like an age, but it, is, it wasn't that long ago. Um, so. You know, even with assessment online, if we can, I'm going to um, share my screen with you and take you to uh, application window. If I can take you to this page, I think it's it's the one. So I'm going to take you to my screen here, and hopefully you can see that we've got this session here. So within the Max Math series. It's actually really intelligent the way they've done this. They've got their textbooks and workbooks online, so you can literally see the textbooks online. So if you're in a you know in a situation, so I know in Saudi Arabia, I was I was delivering to a to a school in Saudi Arabia in the uh, end of August, and um and they've said that Saudi Arabia has announced that this academic year, the whole year, is going to be online. There will be no face-to-face -face teaching, and so if you're in that situation in your country as well, then the the max I would really strongly recommend looking into the Max Math series because they've got so much online. It's it's unbelievable. So here we've got three types of assessments. We've got initial assessments for uh, year four, and there's other years as well. And uh, we've got uh, chapter assessments. So here you've got chapters one to three, four to six, seven to nine, ten to eleven, ten and eleven. And then you've got end of year assessment. And these are our formative assessment packs, and they're brilliant because what you see is you've got an initial assessment. Can you imagine what the initial assessment is used for? Hopefully, you can see. Um, I've just got a message just in case you're not seeing this. So hopefully you can see uh, this in front of you. Uh, and what you'll find is that initial assessment is there so that at the beginning of the year, it might not be the first lesson, but at the beginning of the year, what you want to do is have a quick assessment to see where your children are at because it's been a long holiday or it's been the lockdown and you're restarting school again and you're not sure. So this is beginning of year four. I might give this um, quick assessment to my children in the second or third lesson, right? And why is that? Because it's a very quick assessment, literally eight questions, not more than that, right? I think some of us have 10 questions in some year groups, but initial assessment is not going to take you an hour. It's going to be very quick, very succinct, and it looks at key um, strategies and key concepts from last academic year. So if you're in year four, then it will be primary three or year three, that they'll look at those core essentials and ask those questions at the beginning of year four. That will give you a really good idea about where your children are. So if they're struggling with multiplication division, for example, here, then you know that they're going to need a bit more time. So in your planning, in my mind, I'll think, hmm, okay, they really, every single one of my children struggled with multiplication division. So I know I need to spend a bit more time on that in my planning to kind of go through basic elements and then go into the lessons I would normally go through in year four. So that's something that, you know, I would suggest you do. Um, so we've got an initial assessment. Then we've got chapter assessments. So every two to four chapters, typically it's three chapters, but every two to four chapters, we look at um, uh, assessing our children. So you could have this every half term or every term. Um, and you can see that already. The first question, look how visual it is. We're talking about thousands, hundreds, and uh, units, right? Um, and tens as well here. And so very visual. And so children have a better chance of getting these questions, understanding these questions, and attempting them. So if we think about our children, there'll be quite a few that are not very confident of the language. 
and so we've tried to some in some cases especially at the beginning of the um, assessments we try to minimize the language and try to give you visual representations to kind of get to grips with these questions and then you have the end of year assessments which are a lot longer and as you can see it's quite a few questions here and um, you've got uh, plenty to go through to kind of assess uh, assess the children for the end of the year um, and these are typical assessments that we need regularly in schools um, and what's really nice is our uh, mark scheme as well it has really clear label of mark scheme so you're not kind of trying to work out where is the mark scheme you can see the difference between the, the contrast in color the white background here and the gray background straight away tells you this is the mark scheme and the, the mark scheme has got the questions and the answers in the same place so you know it's not like a totally different interface is exactly like the questions question paper but it's got the answers there as well and you've got the marks on the right hand side so that's kind of a brief look at our different assessment, formal assessment packages that we have for you to kind of try out. Um, if you haven't uh, looked at the Max Math series that we have available, please do contact Reiner. I think there's there's some absolutely amazing materials there from our textbooks to our workbooks to our assessment packs, to our support, audio support online. And what, what this means, and pretty much everything, near, near enough, everything is online. And so what that means is in this situation, we are forced, <laughs> forcefully face ourselves in, um, and rightfully so because of the whole you know um, health and safety issues, it's ideal to have things online, right? So imagine if your children can access the book online and they're at home. It's just, you know, it's really um, thoughtful of, of Macmillan to be able to do that and, and, and just makes your life a lot easier. And having the assessments there as well just means that you, ha you have the opportunity. So we're not telling you you have to do this. We're saying you're flexible enough to be able to do this whichever way you like. Because different schools will have different needs and therefore they'll have different policies. Okay, so I'm going to go back to our presentation and start to wrap things up now. Um, so here, uh, we've got our online assessments. We've got, uh, just because you're not going to be able to see, you know, parts of the presentation, we've put it onto the actual presentation itself uh, so that when you get the PDF of this, you get to kind of recap on what I've just mentioned in the last few minutes, the initial assessment, the in-year support, the chapter assessment, and end-of-year support is all there. And... And you can see the clear mark schemes are three key assessment packs, three key assessments in the packs, initial assessments, unit assessments, and end of year assessments, um, and how they can be used. So you can see that there's different different ways you can use them. I'm not gonna go through these because I've already gone through them. Um, uh, and these are there just so that when you get the PDF, obviously the PDF's not gonna have the video. So you can, when you can actually go through it yourself in your own time. One thing I would suggest as well, those of us who have got a bit of time is, is to use the unit assessments. So some schools in England, uh, what they've done is use the unit assessments at the big, uh, or even um, yeah, some of the unit assessments at the beginning of the of the of the uh, units, so that when you go when you do it at the beginning, you can then measure how much they've learnt by the end. Okay, so some children will struggle. And then by the end of the unit, you do that again, and you see how they've done. So some of us are using them in that way, um, but you don't have to use them in that way. You can use them in different ways. Um, and so kind of wrapping up, um, the assessment packs have also um, been made so that they're in line with the Cambridge International Examinations standards. And so if you're following that, that's you don't have to worry because they're, they're, they're in line with those. So the topics and the way they've been written out are in line with those. The Max Maths books try to follow the CPA approach uh, and so does the assessment. If you don't know about the CPA approach, please do come into or watch one of the webinars that's online. Um, 
the way we do things using the CPA approach means that what you see in the textbooks, you're going to be hopefully able to see in your children's exercise books as well. So this is an example on the left um, is a textbook. On the right, there are uh, these are children's work. And you can see how amazing the children's work is. This is like one of my favorite pictures. I'm not going to go through it because every near enough, every single um, uh, webinar I've done, you know, I go through this image and, and so you can catch up on it in one of our other webinars. Um, and you can see that the this follow through of the CPA approach is even within our assessment packs as well. Um, so blended learning, can we use blended learning for assessment? I think in what we've discussed today, we can use the techniques um, in our own way um, in blended learning so that we can assess children online. Um, we've also got assessments, online assessments, um, using some sort of software, which I'm not great at software, but you can check it out yourself, which also um, allows your children to, to access assessment, you know, assessment packs. So, you know, bear that in mind. I mean, that, that's going to be so much more helpful than uh, many of the things out there at the moment. So in summary, summative assessment is the aim is here to assess knowledge and understanding at a given point in time. Summative assessment um, is used to benchmark and monitor progress uh, as, and can also be used to target uh, used for target setting and hence has an important part to play in a school. Um, and you can use our own uh, assessment packs. The MaxMath series has really uh, brilliant summative assessment packs, which I've also helped to, um, to create. And so hopefully you can benefit from those. Um, if it's cute, we've got a Q&A session coming up now. So if you have any questions, feel free to ask away. Um, thank you for attending this session. We've got, got quite a few of us here. Um, if you have any other um, thoughts and you'd like to contact us after the session, um, feel free to follow us on our social media. We love your interactions here today in the, in the webinar uh, and we would love more interactions with you uh, through our social media sites so do do follow us wherever possible we're pretty much everywhere <laughs> in the major social media um, networks and we've got our website there um, and um, our email address somewhere there international.curriculum at macmillaneducation.com so Hopefully, I know I spoke a bit fast sometimes just because I'm trying to get through the content. Um, so I apologize if you didn't um, understand anything I've said. Feel free to ask away any questions you have. Um, it was really a pleasure to meet you all from Jamaica to um, Saudi Arabia to India to, I think we might have had some Australians as well. So all across the globe, uh, beautiful to meet other beautiful teachers. Um, the teachers are absolutely amazing in my opinion because they do such an amazing job. Um, and in a nutshell, we've, we've managed to change the way we teach with a click of a finger, literally overnight. <laughs> we've come from teaching face-to-face -to, -face to online and we've hardly made a fuss of it. So, you know, it is a struggle, but you've done an absolute, you know, brilliant job. Keep up the amazing work you're doing, all of you. Um, and, you know, I'm sure we'll get through this struggle uh, together by being strong, giving CPD um, and, and trying to support each other wherever possible. So if you have any questions, we've got um, about five minutes or so, five, six minutes from my clock here um, to kind of go through any questions that you have that are related to assessment, <laughs> not, not general questions, assessment-based questions, I should say. Thank you all. Thank you so much for your kind comments as well. Thank you for staying all the way to the end and have and the Q&A session. Thank you, Vijay. And Prashi, thank you so much for attending as well. And everyone else that's made the comments. Thank you for being so engaging as well and, 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 and making sure that it's not a dry session. It can be very dry if... Um, if there was no interaction. So even if it's not our webinar, please do make sure you, you always interact. Thank you, Rick. Thank you, Aisha. <laughs> yeah, happy Teacher's Day yesterday. Yeah, we could have done a webinar yesterday, actually, right now. <laughs> Teacher's Day freebie. <laughs> um, next time, next time, maybe yeah. next time. <laughs> yeah.
Okay, so I think um, I don't see any questions. There's lots of um, thank yous, which is really kind and nice of you. We always appreciate them. Um, and so I'm going to pass the pass the mic over to Raina, as I can't see any questions. Um, if you have further questions after this session, um, you know you know how to contact us. There's all information's there on our final slide. Um, so feel free to to do so. Perfect. Thank you so much, Mohi. As always, I think the attendees really make the session engaging, especially for our um, teams. So thank you so much for the attendees for their engagement. And as always, to Mohi for a fantastic and detailed session, which I think really reflected in the engagement. If you would like to know more, of course, do email us. Um, I did provide a YouTube link in the chat box. So do check out Mohi's past webinar recordings and our primary science and literacy webinar recordings as well. The CPD certificate and the PowerPoint will be available as soon as the webinar finishes in your email inbox. I saw someone who is awake at 4 a.m. in Belize. So Patricia, thank you so much for your dedication. Wow. Um, of being awake so early. I, I don't know if I would have the same, but um, I appreciate, well, we appreciate your um, your uh, efforts there. Um, so we will leave it there for now. Wow. wow. Okay, 5 a.m. Um, <laughs> wow. Mohi is particularly honored, I'm sure, that uh, you've been awake <laughs> yeah. for his session. <laughs> I think you guys deserve a special treat. <laughs> Definitely. Um, so we will leave it there for now. Mohi has a session next week. Um, details will follow. So do um, ensure that you come and sign up and join the session then. So for now, take care, stay safe, and we look forward to seeing you joining a session soon. Take care. Bye. Bye.